when he met me, or I met him, <laughs> he said, you said you're going to be my servant. You ain't did it. Scared me so bad because my field was psychiatry. So you tell me you hear from God. Let me get you some Thorazine, some Librium. You're crazy. But he's talking to me, and he meant what he said. And he stayed with me for three and a half days. You can't get a better deliverance than from Jesus. People always say, well, who, how did you ever go through deliverance? I got it with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods. And when he got through with me, I was saying no devil wanted to be around me. I'd walk down the street. I'm telling you the truth. I'd walk down the street and my skin was so glowing that people were looking at me like, what the heck? They didn't know I had an encounter with Jesus. And because of that, it changed my attitude. It changed my life. It is no longer, I have to be religious. Because I see a lot of people walk on eggshells when they're talking to the Lord. If somebody loves you, you ain't got to walk on eggshells. You end up letting God be God. And since it said God is a spirit and God is the spirit of love, then he loves you. You ain't got to walk on eggshells with him. You enjoy what he gives you. Now, one of the things are that you're all receivers. Now, what do I mean by that? You only operate by what you've been taught. Whatever you learn is what you've been taught. And that's where you make your decisions. But Jesus didn't ever have to be taught. He already knew. And when he came here, he come to teach us. And I thank God for that. I see miracles all around and everything, but it, it goes by the pattern of heaven. Now, the other time I was down here, I taught about the five ways to get close to God. Anybody remember? It was called Sarah. Mm -hmm. What is it? Sincerity is one. What's the next one? Awareness. What's the next one? Righteousness. And what? Admit. Wait, okay, admit what? Admit you're selfish and you're not going to stay that way and that you're going to be humble enough to change. I'm telling you, if you would do those five every day in your life, your life will change. Your realities will change. The blessings will come. Not right now, I was teaching people earlier today to say happy water. That don't make no sense. But if you pray, if you talk to a plant and you speak good things over the plant and it grows, and then if you get another plant and you curse it out and it dies, then it's important on what you say. So I want happy water to go in me. That's what you got to do. You got to bless the water. You got to bless everything. It says uh, that we're supposed to give praise to God in everything. And when it's good, when it's bad, and when it's ugly, you still got to praise God. I meet so many people that have um, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, all these different things. And then after the Lord gets through with them, they're different. And then they go out and get their own family, get their friends. Man. Now, I know y'all probably wonder, why has he got that staff? There's nothing in the staff, okay? You heard me say it, right? But the miracles that we done seen in this staff, ain't nothing in it. I was at church. I have not uh, walked in my pulpit in two years. Two years. Because of my hip pain and stuff. The Lord told me to stand this thing up and stand up beside it and walk into the pulpit. I walked into the pulpit, <laughs> and she's one of the ladies. A couple of the ladies tried to come close to me. When I lifted up the staff, the power of God hit them, and they went down. They were falling up against the wall. Another lady, as I said, I'm teaching you something. It's nothing about the staff. I'm trying to teach you something. That uh, another lady, she was doing the deliverance, and she was talking to the demon, demon, 
what the word says, and you got to come on out and, and by the power and the blood. And she was doing everything, right? I said, hold my staff. I gave her that staff, and all of a sudden she stood up like a strong man and started. She became another woman. But I keep telling you, it's nothing in the staff. It's the word goes first, and signs will follow. I don't know about y'all, but I like that. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of times people be coming for to see signs and wonders. That's what most of the time people tell me. I'll, I'll come to see miracles. I'll come to see miracles. I'm with you. I like to see miracles too. But I like the word first. And so a lot of churches, and not every church, a lot of churches, they teach on uh, theology. What they believe about God. Because that's what you're going to go on, what you've been taught. But they never see any miracles. Miracles, miracles, miracles. That's Jesus. He's a miracle. Miracle worker. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So right now, you mind if I put this down somewhere? In fact, let me see. And like the man said, hold my mule, hold my staff. Let us turn to the Bible. Let's get into the Word. Let's go to Matthew. Okay, the fourth chapter. Starting with the first verse. Matthew, the fourth chapter, starting with the first verse. Now, let me let y'all know a little bit. Is everybody ready to learn a little bit? I have never wrote down a sermon. And I've been preaching for over 40 years now. Never. Never. Never wrote down as people. I got to. I got to study it out. I got to write this all out and stuff. Look, one of us is not doing what is right because one gets miracles, and the other ones all they got to do is preach. And the Bible teaches us how to live. It says to be first of all. Uh, I'm just going to quote what the word says. First thing it does it teaches us to cast out demons. That's how you know if you're a Christian or not. Well, it's not for everybody to cast out demons. The Bible said believer. Does it not say believers? It's in the book of Mark. Uh, Mark. Believers shall cast out demons. And then they will speak with other tongues. The church has got it backwards when they're trying to make you speak in other tongues first. The disciples they were casting out demons before they spoke in tongues. All you do is go back and read. Yes, Lord. Let me go here. Matthew, the what? Fourth chapter and the what? Boy, ain't that a good one? Four and one. All right. Will somebody read and get the blessing? No, let's look at this. It says, it says Jesus. It didn't say Christ to it, does it? It says Jesus. There's a reason for that. If you read uh, Philippians where it says, My God shall supply all of my, what? Need. According to his riches in what? Glory. By who? Christ. Why didn't it say Jesus Christ? Hmm. Time to tell you to learn something. So here's Jesus being led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested or tempted. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after he was hungry, but it didn't say he was thirsty. You need to look those things up. Why didn't it say he was thirsty? All right. Then it says, and when the tempter came, or the tester, that's what it's called, the tempter, the devil, he's a tester. Came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. The devil always going to try to check you out to see who you think you are. You want more power from God? You find out who you are. Are you a son of God? Because that's what he said. I'm making you a son of God. Jesus quote that aren't we all sons of God? And they, 
they, the, the Pharisees were confused and everything else. They didn't understand when Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink of my blood. The disciples who that was with him, there was 82 of them. 70 of them didn't understand. They said, that's too hard for us. That's why you have to study this stuff. The basic Bible is the root of everything. It's the root of everything. When you get an understanding of the word spirit, what does spirit mean? Okay, let me tell you. I'm teaching you something for those that don't know. Spirit is another word for understanding. I don't see very many people writing that down, but okay. It's another word for understanding. So that says, Jesus was led into of the understanding in the wilderness, he to be tempted by the devil. Jesus studied to learn to what he got to do. All right. Then it says, now somebody else read fourth verse. Now, wait a minute. What does it mean it is written? That means somebody had to write something down. There's books for you to study. They call it the Torah. All right. And that's where he quoted from. He said, he said, it is written. Man, okay. Man shall not live by what? Bread. What is bread? Did we just not break bread just now? Is it physical food? Hmm. I don't try to tell y'all everything. I just want you to study. You hear me? It says, man cannot live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What's the difference between the word and the bread? The word is the spiritual food that you need to um, so enrich your spiritual life. So Jesus said he was the bread that came down from heaven. What is the bread then? So that's spiritual too, isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, if you get out of your carnal-minded self and get into the spiritual mind, which is understanding, God will reveal himself such a great way that you will never be the same again. Never, never, never be the same again. Miracles will happen in your life when you start to study it on the right understanding, the right accord. All right, keep going. Somebody read. If you notice, the devil quoted scripture. And he quoted, quoted 91. Let me kind of move this up here a little bit. I think it's a little light, and I don't want my Bible to turn over. I think it'll work, though. What did he say is so important? What is being said is very important. And that's because a lot of times we go around saying, God talked to me, God told me this, God told me that. God don't always visit you. But the angels do. That's why the Bible said, be not forgetful to entertain what? Angels. Strangers. Strangers. For you have entertained what? Angels. angels unaware. Angels come in and out. You just don't know. They appear in human form. That's why you have to be mindful of what's going on. All right. Am I teaching anything yet? Yes. All right. If you don't believe that it's the angels that most time they talk to you, everybody saying, the Holy Spirit talked to me. Holy Spirit talked to me. Look at what the Bible says. When uh, Samson was getting, ready to uh, was getting ready to be born, did the, uh, the Holy Spirit talk to the mother and father? No, it was an angel. When Daniel was praying 21 days, was it the Holy Spirit came and talked to him? No, it was a what? Angel. Psalms 91 tells you that the angel of the Lord will encamp about you and deliver you. Psalms 107, it tells about the angels operate according to the word of God. Now, I got ready to pray for somebody. It was their cat. And a lot of people don't like cats. Well, the cat was dead. Three days under this lady's bed. Now, what I had to do, 
have an understanding of what the word says. If it's God's will, if it be God's will, everything is possible. So I told the lady, stick your phone up under that bed. She stuck the phone up under the bed, and I said the word chet, which is a, a Hebrew word for life. All of a sudden, that cat came out from under that bed. I told some people at my church, uh, if you'll say these things and believe what you say, just like he was saying, believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. She had a dead bird in her yard. And her and her daughter got ready to pick up that dead bird and throw it away. And so her daughter said, what did the pastor see it? Let's speak this word, Chet. So they got over the dead bird, rigor mortis and everything, and said, Chet. All of a sudden, the Paul started uncurling. They said, Chet again. The bird's eyes opened up. They said that the third time that bird stood up, looked at them, and flew away. I'm trying to tell you, there's nothing impossible with God, but you got to be willing to go through the wilderness. You got to go admit you don't understand and admit you are selfish and don't want to stay that way. All right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay. Let's keep on going. Who's, who's time to read? Who wants to read? Now, if you look at that word worship, I hear people all the time, let's worship the Lord, let's worship the Lord, let's worship the Lord. What does worship mean? Hebrew words can be 10, ten different words at the same time. And what it, the Bible always what? Interprets itself. It needs no private interpretation. But if you look at it, it says, uh, it says, of the ninth verse where the devil was talking. He said unto him, all these things I'll give thee if you will fall down and what? Worship, Worship me. Then Jesus answered and said, get thee whence Satan, for it is written, thou shalt, not, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Wait a minute, now listen. The rest of it. And him only shall thou serve. Worship is serving. It's one of the ways. By you serving, you worship. That's why in the Judaism, they call it uh, mitzvah. For all the good deeds. You, every good deed, God is watching you. But a good deed ain't because, oh, I feel like I should do a good deed. That is not a good deed. A good deed comes out of your heart. It's truly, I want to do something for somebody and not for myself. I don't need nobody to pat me on the back and tell me how good I am or how great I am. But I did it because my heart was wanting to do that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me see here. Then the devil, the, oh, come on, somebody else read then. So wait a minute before we go there. What is worship sometimes? Does the Bible do that? Does it say it, uh, worship is serving? No. You just read it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. I keep telling y'all, the Bible of what? Always interprets itself. All right. All right. Now go ahead and somebody read. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. Wait a minute. Why didn't the Holy Spirit come and tend to Jesus? What did it say? Angels. Hmm. Excuse me. Because he never ascended, so the Holy Spirit didn't come down yet. Well, let's see. If you remember, he had already been baptized. And what came up on him? The dove. And the dove was what? The Holy so the Holy Spirit had already been on him. I tell you, the Bible always interprets itself. Okay, so then he, um, keep on reading. Okay, now let's look at this. What does it mean darkness and what does it mean light? Darkness, I'm, I'm going to go fast. Darkness means when you're confused and don't understand. Light means you're what? You understand. 
Okay, you're catching on. Flow in the spirit, sister. Flow in the spirit. In other words, he was trying to give us an understanding of how the kingdom of God works. And he had to teach us bit by bit, inch by inch, you ain't going to get this overnight. You hear me? I used to stay in the library 14 hours a day studying the Bibles, trying to learn everything I needed to learn. And I found out I didn't need that. I needed to read it to get it in me. I ain't got to try to memorize it. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down green paths. He leads me inside of still waters. He, leads me, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. No, I needed that to be in me. That's why Psalms 119 said, I take the word and hit it in my heart that I may not what? Sin against, Sin against you. Miss the mark. All I did was read then. And it changed my life. The power of God is in the word. And when it says that uh, there's power in the blood, what does blood mean? Life. Oh, somebody's flowing in the spirit over there too. Yeah, it means life. So when I say I put the blood of Jesus against you, I'm saying I'm putting the life of Christ against you. Devil, you ain't got no power. All power belongs to him, and he can operate as you don't put him in a box. He was with me earlier today, Mark, and he saw that deliverance that happened. <laughs> Were you prepared for when that thing happened? We talking about my friend. When he, that thing, he was, all those demons that came up out of him, and now he's on the floor and stuff. He wasn't prepared for it, was he? I'm telling you, signs, wonders follow the word. You hear me? Signs and wonders follow the word. What did I say? Signs and wonders follow the word. All right, let's get. He got a son to be high. All right, let's turn to Mark, the 16th chapter. And the 15th verse. All the things that I know, I've been taught. You hear me? I've been taught. And that's what I'm trying to teach y'all. Stop looking at it superficially and look deep. Deep calls them to deep. So now, there's a friend of mine. His name is Paul uh, Cooprider. He's the one who taught me about a normal Christian life. How many want to be normal Christian? I do. I like being a normal Christian. All right. So how are you going to be one unless you've been taught how to be one? And the word teaches you itself. It needs no private person to teach it. It'll teach you if you're willing to learn. All right. Somebody read 16 and 15. Stop right there. Let's go back to that first part. Go into all the world and preach the gospel or the good news to every creature. What is the good news? Don't answer. What is the gospel? Don't answer. Let me tell you what it means. It means prophecy. Prophecy is good news. Prophecy tells you what God said I'm going to do and he brings it to pass. G prophecy when you get ready to deal with something in life you got to speak to your problems for those people that had fear the other day when I was or the last time I was here I said everybody who has fear raise your hand how many people were here well, after you raised your hand I told y'all to stand up in front and then I, I, I was going to sit here in this chair <laughs> that's my that was what I wanted to do, sit in this chair and have y'all walk past me. But the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to get up and walk. Now, fear, if I was fearful, I wouldn't have got up and walked. You can't operate in fear. You got to face your fears. Face them. And as you face your fears, they will start to get smaller and smaller, and your God will get bigger and bigger. And so I started walking, 
And then all of a sudden, as I touched them, the power of God hit them. Some of the people I didn't even touch, all they did was walk past them. Demons were coming up. People were getting healed. Why? Because this is a normal Christian life. Understanding that it's prosper, you prosper by the good news. By the, prof, by the prophecy of the word. Jesus said, and what he said earlier, I listened to everything. What he said earlier, he says, as your soul prosper. A lot of people always think, be in health. You know, in other words, be everything, but they forget you got to get your soul in the right direction. You got to get your soul straight. Your soul is your emotions, the way you think. I keep trying to tell you, you're programmed by the way you think. Yes, Lord. All right. Go ahead and read. Whoever was reading. Stop. Wait a minute. Let me go back to 16 first, and then we're going to go to 17. 16. It said, he believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. What kind of baptism is it talking about? Let me tell you right quick so I can get time going. It talks about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you ain't baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're not one of his. How do you get baptized in the Holy Spirit? You have to read what the book says. The book says in uh, Matt, uh, what is it? Uh, Luke, the 11th chapter, it tells you how to get the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to tell you. You have to go read it. Then it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, a name means authority, they shall cast out devils. Did you notice that's the first thing up there? It says, cast out devils. It don't say, speak in tongues, does it? No. All right, and let's read the next part. And they what? will speak with new tongues. New tongues. There's four different types of tongues. There's the tongues of angels. Would y'all like to hear it? Yes. Let me see if the Lord will give it to me. You hear babies doing that. They're talking to angels. That's what they're doing when you hear that. They're talking to angels. That's one set of language. There's another set of language that you speak in human tongue. Uh, anybody know what I said? How are you? Yes, I spoke French. All right. Buenos uh, dias, senorita. Spanish, but I said what? Well, see, the thing is, if you're not taught those languages, you don't know those things. If you're not taught about the spiritual things, you will not know about the spiritual things. You have to be taught. Jesus taught his disciples for three and a half years. And then he let them go on out there. They had to be taught. All right. Then it says, it says oh, I only told you about two. Didn't you want to hear the other two? There's two more. There's the one that you talk directly to God and nobody can understand what you're saying. Okay? That's third. And then there's the fourth one where you speak in the church and you pray that somebody can interpret. It will not be Korean or Chinese or anything else. It'll be a language that just all of a sudden comes out of your mouth. And as it comes out of your mouth, there'll be somebody can hear it and interpret. That's what you pray for. All right, I hear people. But if there's nobody to interpret, let them keep quiet in the church. But the, what is the rest of that scripture? Let him pray to himself. Because that's between him and God. I tell you, you got to have the whole scripture. You can't eat just a half a loaf. The whole loaf. All right, keep going. Now, let's look at this thing. Because I'm trying to show y'all something. It says in this 18th verse, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. All these people going around picking up snakes. Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? Those snakes will kill you. Well, I believe in what God says. And he, I already taught y'all earlier. Do not put God to the test. <laughs> when the devil told him to jump off the thing, he, he told me, oh, you don't put God through the test. He summed it out. I was like, hey, how you doing? Okay, now, is anybody learning anything? 
How about this, Saturday? Y'all learning anything? Amen. All right. So if you put these things I'm teaching y'all, that's why I don't tell you everything in the Bible. I'm teaching you how to understand the Bible. All right. Then it says, if you drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt you. Now, how many of y'all ready to drink poison? Because y'all believe in God. Why won't you do it? It says it there. <laughs> don't tempt him. There you go. See? He listened. Don't, don't tempt him. God said, don't put me to the test. I'm telling you, these things God can do if he wants to. I drink dead, deadly poison, but it wasn't on purpose. Thank God I'm still here. I had a friend of mine drink some deadly poison and ate some deadly food. But thank God they're still here. What happened was God took that poison and put it in a certain place to where it couldn't hurt the body. But he, they wasn't trying to do that. It was, you know, something that accidentally happened. Yes, Lord. I used to crack up about preachers that try to make people laugh. And I was like, man, why don't that preacher shut his mouth like Jesse Duplantis? And God said, okay, I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, whatever you criticize somebody about, it'll come back and bite you in the butt. God is God all by himself. He don't need us, and he don't need our interpretation. He does not need our input. All right? It says, uh, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, wait a minute. What does that mean? No, no, don't try, don't try to figure it out. I'm going I'm to tell it to you. I just want you to think. What does it mean? They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Well, the first thing we're going to think of, hands, right? But in Hebrew, that's not what it says. It says thoughts. You'll put your thoughts upon a person and they shall recover. If any of y'all been with the ministry here, you'll notice I might tell you to jump up and down. I might tell you to touch my shoulder. I might tell you to oh, touch a thermostat. I, I, I tell people to touch uh, the bench or the chair in front of them, and they got healed. Why? Because the Bible says, I only do what I see my father do. It didn't say what my hand touched, what I see my father do. And because I get a glimpse of something right quick, I have to operate in faith. And faith is another word for what? Trust. trust. I got to trust that I'm seeing what God is showing me. And as you notice, people get healed. It says, they shall lay hands on the sick, or their thoughts are on the sick, and they shall recover. You notice, Donnie will tell you, he does deliverance over Zoom. Are you able to touch those people? But what is it by? Thought. If you don't think, it ain't happening. It's by thought. It's not by you touching anything. I'm teaching you the spiritual things of God's kingdom. All right, let's go, Lord. Yes, Lord. So then after that, the Lord had spoken unto them. He was received up in heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father. In other words, the Bible tells you he sits at the right hand of the Father, right? Now, is that on God's hand? No. It's on his right side. And anybody that knows a little bit about uh, the brain you have a left and right side. The right side is the, the creative part. And the other side is what? Emotional part. God's son is at his creational part. God created everything through his son. When he said, let there be. <laughs> All right. Let me see here. And then it says, and they went forth. Who went forth? The disciples. And preaching to everywhere, the Lord working with them. Who's the Lord? The Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, okay? And confirming 
the word with signs following. And then that last word on there, anybody look at it? What's that last word say? Amen. amen. What does amen mean? Now, you've been taught in the Bible schools. It means so be it. But let me tell you what the, really, what the word really says. It says truth. So you just read that and then it says it's the truth. You go to court, tell the truth, the whole truth, and what? <laughs> Nothing but the truth. All you had to do was say amen. And that's what you did. And if you're telling a lie, like my brother was with me earlier today, and that thing, that demon lied to me. And, and don't do that. When the Holy Spirit is moving fully in me, don't lie. I reached out and touched that thing. It screamed and hollered. And by that time, I done got mad. If I get mad, devil, there is no no two ways about it. I'm going to whoop you. And then I'm going to show you something else. Mark will tell you, I called in the angels then. And the angels beat him up. And then after that, I called Jesus. I'm trying to tell you, I know him. I know how the kingdom operates. That's what I keep trying to teach y'all so you can get into it. I don't want to do this by myself. Not that I am doing it by myself. But I'm trying to tell you, only reason I teach is so that you can go into another level. We always talk about from faith to faith and glory to glory. That means another level. In the old schools, we used to say, another level, another what? Devil. Devil. Well, what is the devil? He's a tempter. He's a tester. That's just to get you to understand. The more you climb, the more you're going to understand to climb more. Just like my brother said earlier, he's still studying. I'm still studying. He said he's been there how many years? How many? 16. 16. I've been studying for 40 I told you, I know a little bit. And that's the truth. I ain't lying when I say I know a little bit. So, signs following. Miracles working. Yes, Lord. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you. Some days the Lord tells me to walk by faith. And some days the Lord tells me to say things. <laughs> 